Hey guys, AJ with Relentless Racing. Welcome back to the channel. If you missed episode five, check out the link in the description. I know it's been a hot minute since my last episode and I apologize. Shame on me, but I've been at the track. However, I have been diligently working on Project Black. Without further ado, let's continue this 1ZZ rebuild. Episode six is packed with many details. First, we attach the coolant bypass pipe and the oil dipstick. Then we move on to the valve cover and PCV valve installation. Also, we discuss the importance of fuel injector cleaning. Lastly, we measure the oil at full level compared to the rods at their lowest position and install the oil pan. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. If you'd like to see more of this content, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Enjoy the video. I'm just working on my valve cover for my 1ZZ. And I had some stuff in here. If you look inside here, they have those fins right in there. And typically the fins have like a ton of oil residue in there. And this cam dip just kind of made an easy job out of getting that stuff out. I scrubbed the crap out of this thing on the inside and see how clean it is. But I just couldn't get this stuff inside here. so. But the cam dip just knocked it right out. So let me just turn this thing just a little bit. Look at that. Look how clean it is underneath there. I just got to dump this out and rinse it out. But uh, the cam dip is doing its work. Love it when this stuff works. Here's what I used to clean it up. And all I did was just try to dry that thing out. But look how clean that thing looks. Whenever I do rebuild, I always take my fuel injectors and I have them cleaned and calibrated at RC Fuel Injection. So here's what the box looks like. You usually open this thing up and they give you the old parts, obviously, and they give you some cool RC fuel injector stickers or some decals, and they give you an advertisement. But the most important thing here is they give you this report right here. So the main thing to understand is anytime you have a four cylinder, each one of these injectors is responsible for 25% of your horsepower. So if any one of them is not working well, you're not putting out the optimum amount of horsepower. So what they do at RC Fuel Injection, and again, they're located in Torrance. And just so you guys know, these guys, if you send them injectors, you can mail them to them and they'll mail them back to you in the United States or anywhere in the world. So they do this all the time. But check this thing out. This is the flow in CCs per minute. And you can see here that the flow is not optimum. The flow here should be about 250-ish. And you notice that all of these are down just a little bit. And more importantly, the pattern is not looking good on these things. So there's only a fair pattern here on injector three. I labeled my injectors. And you can see that one, two, and four are dripping. And look how far down number four is. It's 131 and it should be at 250 cc's per minute. And so a lot of horsepower loss here, a lot of horsepower over there, 
lost at 186 compared to the 250. And then after they're cleaned and calibrated, check out the pattern. They're all excellent. And they're closer to the 250 mark. You can see the lowest one here is 248, well within the tolerance of a good injector for this particular motor. And you can see that this is a Nippon Denso injector style. And I said it was for a 2003, but it really doesn't matter. So in any case, if you guys want to get a hold of RC Fuel Injection, there it is right there. There's the address. And again, they're in Torrance, California. Here's the phone number. And if you want, you can use my discount code and get a 10% discount. And the code is AJCLEAN. Here is injector number one. And what Keone does is he marks the top of the injector right there. And they also replace the O-rings. There's a little filter in here as well and you get both of these pieces as well down at the bottom the o-ring piece right here and so they replace all those pieces and again this is what those things look like and these are the spare parts so you can see the bigger o-ring out there that's the one that's on the bottom and then you can see the little filters that's what the filters look like and those filters are actually in here and then there's an o-ring up at the top you can kind of see one in the bag right there and that's that one so what i'm going to do is i'm going to lube these things up with Molly coat, install them first into the fuel rail. This guy right here, I'm gonna put them first into here, put them in like that. And again, I'll put the Molly coat on there. Here's the Molly coat right over here. This is the Molly coat that I use. And then we'll put this thing or in the rail onto the motor. Check out the dipstick. This is the engine oil dipstick right here. It is fully engaged, so it's as low as it's gonna go. One of the things I always like to check is how far away is the very top of the oil mark from the actual bottom of the connecting rods. So what I'm gonna do is, to make sure that I understand exactly what this is, I'm gonna take this aluminum stock right here, and this is, it's approximately one inch. And for the metric guys, that is 25.4 millimeters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this thing down right across the block like that so I have a level surface. And the top of the oil is right about there. So from there, I'm just gonna measure like this and just kind of understand exactly where it is. So it is approximately 30 millimeters or 1.2 inches. So even if you fill it too much with oil, it's okay. And at the bottom, which represents like a quart down at the bottom of this marking, let me put that in here. That's approximately 2.29, 2.3 or 58 millimeters, 58, 59 millimeters. So, if you overfill, that's okay. I don't think it's gonna interrupt anything. And plus remember, when the motor starts running, the oil obviously gets sucked up into the motor. So some of it goes down a little bit. So it's even further than that away from the bottom of the rods. Oh, you have to add one inch to that. Don't forget that. So one inch plus whatever number I just gave you. I know I said last time there would only be one more video in this series, but there was just too much content and the video got too long. So for my sanity and for yours, I opted to make this long video into some shorter videos. Stay tuned for episode seven, where we will attack the intake, throttle body, and part of the wiring harness. Thanks again for watching this video and please subscribe, like, and don't forget to hit that notification button. This is AJ with Relentless Racing. Stay relentless and I'll see you on the track.